Hello, and welcome to this very special presentation of the Summer Game Fest! What I'm going to do is that I'm going to be talking about some things before I continue. Some things that you probably might notice right off the bat. I made some adjustments to my avatar, so now not only do I appear more like an anime character, but also I've made some adjustments to the yellow around me. Because it's something that's been bothering me for a while. From now on, this is what my avatar is going to be looking like unless I start uh, changing it for cosplay and stuff. Alright, here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Booyah! Oh, come on. I'm glad that you give an advisory here, but what isn't offensive anymore? Please welcome to the stage the creator of the Game Awards, Jeff Keighley! Welcome back! Here we go, finally! Hello, everybody. Welcome to Summer Game Fest 2024. You ready to see some video games? I want to know everything. This is a showcase of what's next for games live from the YouTube theater YouTube here in theater. LA. First of all, welcome. I know everyone around the world is joining us for this special moment. And I know if you watch this show, you don't just play games. You deeply care about this art form. Yes, I do. The good news is that we have a lot of amazing games to show you from creators around the world to ours. That's amazing. I'm glad. But let's also face it. This has been been a tumultuous and difficult year with company layoffs and studio closures. More than that. But there's also something else happening. Our industry is evolving and changing. Yeah, for better or worse. Smaller teams and new creators are finding incredible success. Yeah, because they actually care about what they're doing. The top 10 best-selling new games on Steam so far this year. Two of them are considered big company games, but the other eight come from indie, mid-sized teams, or solo developers. Developers. I look at this list, it's pretty cool, right? Yeah, and some of them come from a studio that's already popular. New teams and smaller creators can and will break through. It's a reminder to big companies that they have to treat their developers right because today there are many paths to sustainability and success, and that's what makes this industry so, so great. Well, I mean, they also have to do the same thing to their customers because without them, they don't have success. Because over the next two hours, we'll have big franchises on stage like Star Wars, Batman, and Harry Potter. Really? Smaller titles, including a few games made by single individuals and first-time creators that we invited to be part of this show because we think this platform is important as a way to show you new things that you might not even know about. Really? See a game that piques your interest, please wishlist it, or even better, send it to a friend and get them excited. Uh, we what if you don't have friends? Grow the gaming community. And we are going to do that today over the next two hours as we have a lot of games to show you, plus Day of the Devs directly after with even more indie titles. So should we get to the games? Yes, absolutely. Let's do that. I waited long enough for it. Now, here's our first announcement. Okay, what's the first announcement? Next. Uh, hey, look, this is a... Uh, a hot dog? Wait, this is Legos. The lead and unannounced action game. We see you as more of a sidekick. Oh, sure, I get that a lot, but uh, check out my range. Okay, okay. Range! The fuck was that? Polarity! <laughs> That was weird. Uh, wait a minute. Is this Horizon? Is this the Lego? Yep, I knew it. Because they were talking about this. I didn't think they were going to actually show a trailer for it here. Who is that? Uh, that's Alloy? Aloy. Oh, Aloy. Don't, whatever. Thunderjaw went mad and is tearing through the valley. Don't worry. I'll bring it down. I mean, you have a lot of ways of bringing everything down. You can literally build yourself a giant weapon and use it against all the enemies. All by herself. Hello. I have friends, you know. Uh, I don't remember her talking like that, but okay. What is this place? It's another Lego building. All the shiny things. Ooh, money. And making a home. Uh, she can always make a new home with the Lego pieces. Okay, why did there have to be a Lego uh, game for this character? I'm just saying. You don't have one for Uncharted. You don't have one for, uh, like literally any other, any other title. I'm just saying. You chose Horizon. I've seen it for the other properties for like DC and Marvel and stuff, but Horizon? Uh, isn't that cannibalism for Legos? Like, come on, you could have had one for like, never mind. I don't want to give them any ideas. Okay, that was okay. There you go. Wasn't that fun? I mean, it's Legos. What do you think? Coming out later this year for PlayStation, but also day one on PC and Nintendo Switch. Of course, it's definitely that type of game that should be on Nintendo Switch. Designed with two player action in mind, supporting couch and online co-op. 
Now we're gonna completely shift the tone to the next game from Torn Banner Studios, the developers behind Chivalry 2. For their next project, they are proud to announce No More Room in Hell 2, the sequel to the 2011 award-winning source mod. Eight players start separate in the dark, and it's up to you to find your friends and survive with permadeath. Here is the first look. Alrighty then, off to a very moody start. Permadeath is uh, quite a crazy choice. I mean, I played Resident Evil 2. I've seen how this plays out. <laughs> No, not like Kenneth. That's how Kenneth died in Resident Evil. Okay, I'm starting to get a feeling this is like Resident Evil 2. Like, I'm starting to see similarities here. I know that's a weird thing to say, but seriously. The convenience store, long roads and highways, all this shit. Even the gas station. It's like, you played Resident Evil 2 Remake, you definitely see the similarity. But again, I'm not saying that they're doing that. I'm not saying they're plagiarizing. Now, imagine if Capcom did the same thing. Imagine if Capcom made a free-to-play Resident Evil game that was just like this. It took place across different maps and was constantly being updated and it was just like this. Imagine. It would be amazing. But I guess we gotta settle. It looks really, really intense. Please join me in welcoming someone who I've known for over a decade. Hideo could Oh, never mind. When she was sitting in the audience. Well, this year, she's joining us on stage. We're thrilled to have her with us. Please welcome Curious Joy. I totally forgot about Curious Joy. Thank you, Jeff. Hi, everyone. I am so excited to be here at Summer Game Fest. I'm here with you today to share some even more super fun trailers. So let's get straight to another world premiere. This is a highly anticipated game from a beloved franchise. Let's take a look. All right. What is it? As young is this Harry wizards, Potter? We all dream yep. of soaring through Harry Potter. Summer. When it comes to Quidditch, we've all wondered, do I have what it takes to be the next Quidditch star? Oh, right, right. To beat your toughest opponent, to keep your composure in the face of adversity, to chase your dreams at any price. I mean, this seems like it'd be a nice little sports game but to seek glory for your team the challenge is too great no dreams too big so ask yourself do you have what it takes do you have the heart of the quidditch champion i mean if it's free to play and actually worthwhile possibly i'm just saying there's got to be a lot more to it than just the name harry potter carrying it i'm just saying there's got to be a lot more going for it for it to last long i could see this game probably not lasting too long worldwide on september 3rd for consoles and pc <laughs> Now we move from the Potterverse to a brand new world. Really? From a single developer, Gavin Eisenbeis, up in Seattle, who has been making games all by himself for a decade. Good. Choo Choo Charles was a fan favorite. I never played that game. game. And he showed me a few months ago, and I really wanted to debut it here. Get ready to backstab, race, or cooperate with up to 20 of your friends in Cuff Bust. Well, what if you don't have any friends? I'm serious. If this is the type of game where you're going to have to have a lot of so-called friends play with you, I think it's going to be a little difficult. Wait, wait, what the fu- Oh, oh, uh, okay. He's literally dropping the soap, but to stop people from following. Okay, that's clever. Anyway, like I was saying, if this requires a lot of people to play with you, this might be a little difficult. I mean, two people might be fine. Maybe even three. But a whole fucking avalanche of people playing with you. You could only hope the people that are playing are also available without too many restrictions, you know? Like, what if there's a single player mode? At most, there should be a mode where you play with bots instead of just this. Where you play with people that you probably do and do not know. Or have an acquaintanceship with. Because the way I see it, if this game does require a lot of people to play with you and you don't have a lot of people to fulfill the parts, yeah, it's gonna be a difficult game to get into or in general, see survive long. But if from what it looks like, there's like three people primarily on on screen. Three people doing different tasks all at once. Or they're all working together to stop the other characters from getting out before they do. Or something. Oh, they're smoking. Okay. Smoking is bad for you. Okay, I would have never expected to see that happen, but alright. Seriously. They need a single player mode with bots. That's a fun one, right? It looks fun. It also looks very challenging and annoying for some people to exploit. So glad to have that on stage. <laughs> All right, next one of this year's most anticipated games is Star Wars Outlaws. Seemingly, it's one of the most exciting games for some people. The first open world Star Wars game where you live the life of a scoundrel. On Monday at 12 p.m. Pacific, you'll get to see a full gameplay showcase during Ubisoft's Forward event, streaming as part of the continuing Summer Game Fest events. But right now, we've got an exclusive new glimpse at the game, just a small taste of what's to come. Small taste, okay. Let's see if the small taste is worth it, because some people already don't like where the direction is going. I mean, it's nice to have an open world Star Wars game. We could have already had that shit with Han Solo, but you know, licensing, likenesses, and all that other shit, whatever. I get it. But Amy Henning almost gave us the Uncharted game of the Star Wars universe, but we don't have that. And I just feel like if they're going to go in this direction with an open world Star Wars game, they need to actually go all out so the main protagonist isn't just a typical badass female. No, she needs to be vulnerable too. She needs to have more personality. So yeah, hopefully it's worthwhile. I think I spotted Lando there, 
so great. And by the way, I'm just noticing everything we've so far, I think is going to be coming out this year, Cuff Bus, I'm not quite sure, but it's like, it's so cool that there's stuff that we're going to get. We? Well. What the That's fuck do you mean, we? I'm not buying that yet. I had a chance to play through this next game, and I have to say, it is really spectacular. Neva comes from Nomada Studio, the creators of the game award winning game, Grease. I've never played Grease. A woman bound to a curious wolf cub. Here's your first ever look at the gameplay. Yeah, I've never played Grease. Hell, I never even heard of this fucking game. But from what I can see, they're very colorful. Very colorful. Very interactive. Possibly original. I'm just saying, there's so many games that I have not fucking played or heard of. While at the same time, knowing about a lot of games that I've heard of but never played. Anytime that there's like a dog animal and <laughs> Dog animal. Any other time that there's an animal that is a dog involved. Wolf, fox, that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. People get more protective. It's really amazing how side-scrolling games are still relevant. Years ago... Go. It's almost like as if people were getting over that, where they don't want those type of games anymore. But now, over the course of the existence of Steam and other indie titles being released on consoles as well as PC, it's given people the opportunity to make sure that this genre survives longer. I'm not too interested, but I see the potential. The game is such a true work of art, especially when we get into some of the combat. It is tons of fun to play, and there's much more coming later today in the Devolver Direct, which will air directly after Day of the Devs on this same stream. So we got lots more for you. <laughs> All right, next, it's time for our next game announcement. Okay, what's this next game announcement? Study the past if you would define the future. Okay. Our architects of fate, working in these walls of time. Let us all for death prepare, or on the last great journey fare. Let me not then die ingloriously and without a struggle. This seems very historic. But let me first do some great thing that shall be told among men hereafter. And what would that be? This world's life until the end. Okay, it seems to be going a lot of historic events, so I'm still curious what the hell this is supposed to be. Your names shall not be lost. So it shall be. So it shall be. So it shall be. Ah, okay. I mean, I haven't played the other games, but I see. That was creative. Not bad. Hello, everyone at Summer Game Fest. On behalf of the Firaxis team, we are thrilled to finally announce that Civilization VII Shit, is the end next year. I'm in awe of the amazing team that has brought us to this moment. But we also have to thank you, our incredible fans around the world, for your overwhelming support of this franchise. I haven't played one fucking game yet, though, but you're welcome. We can't wait to share more, and we hope you'll join us later this summer for the full reveal of Civilization VII. I mean, and there's no guarantees, but okay. Stay civilized. Eh, eh, easier said than done. Seeing what the world is like right now. All right, what's this? Ooh, wait, I think I already know what this is. It's that game that was revealed last time that involved ancient history and lots of fighting and a guy that looked like a monkey. And I know that I'm describing it oddly, but this is the third time, the third fucking time. And there's gotta be more to it now because it's been long enough since it's been advertised. This is the one that everybody was excited about and the one that I was very impressed by. And could you imagine though, Planet of the Apes video game that's like this, where the main protagonist is a monkey, well, with human traits and it's like this. I mean, this is the closest you're gonna get to that. So, <laughs> yep, this is the game. Wait, that's it? I guess I've shown enough. I think they just want us to play the game to get the full experience. Okay, fair enough. Still interested. I don't know how much that's going to cost, but I'm not going to be paying up front at launch. I'm just going to wait and wait and wait and wait and wait. I don't know if I'll ever be able to play this or if I ever will, but you know, yeah. <laughs> Okay, I do not have a MetaQuest. I do not have a VR headset. I am interested to have a VR headset, but the problem with MetaQuest, from what I remember, is that you have to have an account to use it. I don't want to do that. I want to use the goddamn VR headset without having to worry about making an account, because that's going to set everything back. But okay, I guess that's the kind of game they want to have on there. Eh, not enough to convince me. What is this? Oh, so it seems to have a lot of uh, multiplayer elements here. So it's humans against a bunch of supernatural enemies traveling from one place to the next. Okay, one's human. Hmm, it's a bit intriguing, but I'd still like to know more. Oh, look at that, another service. You know what, I barely stream games, honestly, no matter what they release, because I feel like streaming games off of a platform isn't gonna be enough for me. I wanna still be able to have access to the title whenever I want, so that's why I feel like streaming isn't the future for gaming. Here we go, Warhammer. Another series that I have yet to do any Let's Plays of. I haven't even collected all the games, but I got some of them. Sometimes I wonder how many more of these games are they gonna make? How many more Warhammer games are they gonna be creating until they're done with it? Ah, Space Marine, that's right. I remember seeing a trailer to that.
All right, welcome back to Summer Game Fest. We've got some amazing developer guests joining us throughout the show, and I'm very excited to introduce our first guest. Hideo Kojima. Creators who are working on a brand new fantasy RPG metaphor slated to launch this October. Please welcome the director and art designer of Persona 3, 4, and 5, Katsura Hashino and Shikanori Sojima. Unfortunately, I don't have a deep relationship with the Persona series. Unfortunately, I don't, but I am familiar with the fact that there are certain people that are popular and that are involved in the development cycle, but yeah. Arigatouzaimasu. Oh god, here we go again. Subtitles will fix this. Thank you, everybody. It is a pleasure to be here. My name is Hashino, and I am the director of Metaphor. It is a pleasure to be here with Mr. Soejima. I would turn the subtitles on, honestly, to translate what he's saying, but I feel like it's going to be a bit redundant if somebody actually turns on the captions. This game is an RPG in which the party members transform into their jobs. Of course. Archetypes allow you to fight against your enemies. Yeah, it's just another RPG game. This is no different than what we've already made. You're going to buy it anyway way because you like the other franchise that we made. So just buy it. Just buy it. Just buy it. Buy our game. We know it's the same. Archetypes are the embodiment of power born from the will to face your fears and anxieties. We gave it our all to instill each and every archetype with a feeling of strength and uniqueness in each of their designs. These archetypes can gain experience and even evolve into stronger versions. I see what the fuck they're trying to do here, but when you deconstruct all this shit, it just sounds like all they're doing is trying to find an excuse to make another RPG game. The same way that Square Enix makes another RPG game with these highly exaggerated explanations. In fact, we've even brought our latest trailer today, which is centered around the topic of these archetypes. Thank you very much, and we hope you enjoy it. I'm not downplaying this. I'm just saying. See, when you look at this, you can see the similarities to the other franchise that they have, okay? And I understand there might be a story here that'll be very interesting to some people, or whoever is a fan already of the content that they're doing, but still, still, I feel like this is just an excuse to make another RPG game instead of maybe turning this into an actual animated show. Because you could see it right here through the movie scenes. This should have just been an anime. I would have watched this as an anime, and then I would be able to probably enjoy it more than just having it be an interactive video game. Look at this, it looks beautiful as an anime. I want to see this as an anime, not a video game. Like, honestly, they did not have to make another RPG game. I'm not saying that them making RPGs are a bad thing, but after so many goddamn Persona games, at some point you gotta ask, when are they going to try something completely different? I know that there's a hell of a lot more out there, but really, the RPG thing, I feel like they need to take a break from that and try something entirely different. Because when you start looking at it this way, you can start seeing them probably recycling ideas and making up excuses for new ones, but this seems interesting still. Such an honor to have Hashino and Shojima with us uh, on stage. Thank you guys, and for that deep look at the archetype, such stunning visual designs. <laughs> Now we're going to jump into the Arkhamverse. Arkham, yes, Batman. Quest 3 exclusive VR game coming later this year. Why the fuck is it in, why? The mysterious Rat King and his cultish devotees. Here's your first look at the story trailer for Batman Arkham Shadow. All right, I'm just going to be talking out of this whole thing. I'm just going to be talking the entire time. I have to say this. Why in the fuck is this Batman game exclusive to VR? This is supposed to be taking place after the last Arkham game, Arkham Knight. And you mean to tell me that this this motherfucking game is only exclusive to VR. It's not going to be released on console and PC regularly. No, it's going to be on goddamn VR with a villain that some people were highly anticipating to fight in third person. Come the fuck on. Like, where are we going with this? You know, especially with all the bullshit that's been going on at Rocksteady, you'd think for a moment that they would want to salvage whatever they got left with this. And this is a bit weird anyway after the ending of Arkham Knight, but then again, people have their own thoughts about it. But seriously, this would have been better if we had options. Regular and VR version. Like, I can't play this game without a fucking VR headset. What the hell are they expecting? It's intriguing, but still. <sighs> whatever. It is time to update fans on a legendary fighting game franchise. Street Fighter. Because I have been a fan of this series ever since one of its first iteration and have been playing each one ever since. Let's check it out. It has to be Street Fighter or it's Street Fighter. See? No, wait, Final Fight. It's Final Fight. Fatal Fury? Fatal Fury. Okay, so they're bringing these characters in here now. Wait a goddamn minute. Wait a minute. Is this a crossover movie or is this a crossover in the actual game? So that's in season two. So they're going to be having a... Wait, M. Bison. It has to be. Unless... If that's not Bison. Okay, it's Bison. I thought that was going to be Seth. Because if that was Seth, I'm like, fuck Seth. I hate Seth. All right. So Elena, Elena has more clothes on her. They better have her alternative outfit. 
the fuck is this? This looks a little humorous than it is being serious. Tears of metal. A bunch of Scottish people going out of their way- well. <laughs> There's a lot of jokes I could be making about this, but is this like a roguelike game where you die and you have to restart all over again? You go from one place to the next with RPG elements and then you have to survive as long as you can? Is that what this is? Is this like a war game where you play as a Scottish character and you have to survive as long as you can? You know, I would say Irish too, but okay. All right then. Another Unreal Engine game, Dragon Ball Z. You know, I feel like the Dragon Ball Z series peaked after Dragon Ball Z. GT was one thing, but I feel like they've made enough Dragon Ball games that are like this. I just feel like if they're gonna be uh, making any more Dragon Ball games, that they gotta do something a little more creative than just what they've already been doing for the last decade. I just don't see, instead of it being focused on the same stories we've already gotten with characters that are new and we don't really caring about, you know, we go over the Saiyans before they went to Earth, and then when we get to Earth, we get to all the other stuff, you know? I just feel like they're gonna be retelling all the goddamn stories and having all these other characters that they need to talk about the other stuff You know, there's other movies and things that happen too. Maybe I'm just fed up with this, you know Maybe I'm just fed up with Dragon Ball now. It's like I'm not that excited anymore I like Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, but it's like after a while it just went too far We got your release date for Sparking Zero October 11th now we step into the world of Delta Force Hawk Ops, a free-to-play tactical shooter available to play on all platforms. Here's a look at their multiplayer FPS extraction mode. Okay, what's that? Rally up. We've got a new mission, Operation Lightning Strike. Lightning Strike. Zero Dam is now very serious. With conflicts escalating between Havoc Corps and Alsara Guard, it's time to take action. Objective, collect and decode the Mandel Brick, located at the tourist center at the southeast region. We need to utilize terrain for stealth insertion. Execute swiftly and silently. Okay. Okay, so this is supposed to be free to play. Now the question is, is it going to actually play better than Call of Duty or the same as Call of Duty? Because I want to have a lot of options and I don't want to feel like everything is too fucking wonky. See, I'm interested with this type of game, but I don't want to have too many limitations. I don't want to feel like it's not going to give me any excitement. I don't want to feel like it's, uh, it's prone to being sabotaged, you know? Because I can't play Call of Duty right now. I can't play it because there's security vul vulnerabilities that Activision hasn't fucking fixed across the majority of the games. And and the fact that Call of Duty has too many cheaters and all that other bullshit. So even though this is free to play, I really hope that everything is secured and I'm able to have a lot of fun with it. I'm glad it's free to play. I'll do a Let's Play stream of that, maybe. The game's premium campaign mode, Black Hawk Down, is a reimagining of the original game that is also fully licensed to recreate moments from the award-winning Ridley Scott movie. Really? Here is your world premiere first look at that gameplay. Really? Good to know. And when they say premium, you mean like I have to fucking pay for it? Because I don't want to do that and if i do hypothetically speaking i hope it's cheap and i have to admit i never saw the black hawk down movie yet and seeing that this is licensing obviously uh this might not last a while i mean it might last for a certain amount of time but again licensing could be a problem because eventually they're gonna have to take the content out of the game i mean back then it was a different story because it would stay on disc but now it's it's <laughs> they delete it unless you own it forever because otherwise it, you know you're not gonna be able to play it anymore see this is something i could get into i've been playing a lot of military shooters for a long time you know with call of duty and stuff but that needs to be free too but i guess because of licensing they need money i have an update for you on fatal theory city of the wolf i was talking about that earlier what the fuck for real this time really okay what about fatal fury we got to start out with the classics showing us what it used to look like so much nostalgia let me guess he's gonna turn into the character suddenly he's gonna transition to turning into the character that he's playing as or maybe they're gonna show themselves being competitive and i also should admit that i don't have the other fatal fury games i have to be honest i have king of fighters but i don't have uh fatal fury there we go What's this? Wait, is this another advertisement for the Xbox Series X? Or, you know, not just that, but also Halo? Because I've already established that I don't have an Xbox One X or an Xbox Series X or whatever. So hopefully someday I can get an Xbox upgrade because of the fact that the Xbox 360 store is going to be closing. And, you know, that's that. And I got a lot of Xbox One's games that I need to play. Ah, look at that. Lovely monitor. But I already got a 4K monitor and it's been working fine. I'm using it right now with the HDR settings. <laughs> Okay, what is this? I see so many games that have advertisements with great animation. I'm surprised that they don't, like, put it to use for anything else, you know? See, if I was making something like this, I would have turned it into an animated series. So on the side, there would also be a video game with the same content. I mean, it's not a new concept, but I would have definitely done that. I feel like this is a waste of talent when you have so much effort put into animations that are only used for movie scenes, but you don't want to actually put it into a real animated series project. If this is a mobile game, I have to admit that I don't play a lot of mobile games. I've gotten some 
some a lot, but I haven't played a lot. So I feel like if they're advertising a mobile game to me that I'm probably not going to be playing it immediately. And plus the fact that, you know, you got to have a particular upgrade in order to play them, you know, in terms of uh, what's necessary to, to get it running properly. Because for the most part, they get them working on uh, Unreal Engine and stuff. But I'm glad to know it's on Steam. <laughs> Is that Gundam? I'm just saying, there's a lot of mecha stuff, so, you know, that's another thing. I also haven't been getting into a lot of Gundam games. I mean, I'm familiar with Gundam, but unfortunately, I haven't experienced a lot of the properties, even though it's been around for a long time. But even if this isn't Gundam, I just feel like there's so many games that are like this that I missed out on that I haven't gotten into. That being said, Zone of the Enders does exist, and I uh, plan to do a whole Let's Play of both of the uh, original two games. Mecha Break. Okay. You know, it's very confusing sometimes, you know? You look at this and you think, oh, it's Gundam, but it's not. That was a look at Mecha Break with its immersive aerial and ground combat with lightning fast maneuvers. Next, Jason Blum and his Blumhouse banner have become synonymous. Yeah, I've heard about that. They're trying to start a game studio. I already got it running going, but the fuck are they going to do? Now Blumhouse is entering the video game world in a big way. Okay, but seriously, what is it that Blumhouse plans to do? What is Jason Blum's plans with video games? I mean, they could have other people make video games with their company banner, but it needs to be worthwhile. Don't just have your company name be the only selling point. Because Blumhouse, honestly, has a track record of movies that unfortunately are hit and miss. Especially because of the fact that half of that bullshit is PG-13, which I hate. There's like no fucking reason to have the majority of your horror movies being PG-13, Jason. If I ever had a fucking movie under your movie banner, under your company banner, that is. I would never under any circumstances want it to be PG-13. It needs to be rated R if I need it to be rated R, not goddamn PG-13. I see the potential here with whatever it is that they're doing, but there has to be a lot they have to bring to the table in order for this, this so-called new gaming company by Blumhouse to be worthwhile. I can't get over the fact that he's doing this because Jason thinks that this is going to last a very long time when it has to have a lot more to offer. But we'll see. We'll see, Jason. We'll see. I'm still going to be skeptical. There's a hell of a lot more you gotta show here. One game is not enough. Please welcome Jason Blum. There he is. Creative lead at Blumhouse Games. Jason Buffoonery. Seriously, Jason. I want a happy death day three. We need the That's fucking movie. Ourselves a full slate there. That's incredible. So Jason, tell us a bit about- Yeah, like, please tell us more well, now. We've been uh, very, very busy. Clearly. Uh, thank you for having us. Thank you guys all. Great to hear the fans out there. Yeah, I'm not one of your biggest fans. You'll all be very happy to know we're working at this very minute on the sequel of Five Nights at Freddy's. It's coming. Okay, but what about Happy Death Day 3? I know that Universal has to give them the call, but seriously, where the fuck is it? To my great relief, getting more and more popular. Our movies are working. It's working on streaming. Yeah, and obviously. Try and take our approach to movies and apply it to games. Seriously, you think it's going to be the same experience? We're going to look for creators and give them a platform and encourage these creators to be weird and subversive. Like A24. Scariest things they can and put them into really cool <laughs> games. Like A24. Okay, so A24 would be the ones that should be doing this. I'm surprised. We saw a bunch of games there. What can you tell us about kind of the overall lineup of games? As you just saw from our slate, our horror games are a lot like Blumhouse movies. They come in many different flavors of fear. Yeah, but mostly PG-13 flavors. So maybe you're a fan of nostalgic 90s experiences with a bit of a twist, intense first-person shooters, or maybe, Jeff, you just want some bonus murder and you're otherwise very cozy farming sim. I just don't want it to be downgraded. So many different subgenres to explore and our independent development partners, they feel the same and they're just as excited, which means we've got psychological nightmares, supernatural scares, cosmic horror. And our team has worked really hard to work with global, creative, talented partners. And that means for us that we really want to, as we're working in indie projects, which means that we can take risks, we can be flexible, and really we can push the limits of what's possible in scary storytelling. And we're so excited. Not if they're downgraded, but okay. Hopefully they're not restricted to the teen rating. Some of these are coming soon, Jason, right? We got a good slate. Well, yeah, we're on PC and console. Great. And yeah, we wanted to start with not just one, but we wanted to start with a few games. So you want to tell us about those? Yeah, so Fear the Spotlight is our first release coming yeah. later this year, and it really hits our mission statement. It's an amazing 90s horror experience. It's got great characters, a compelling narrative. It's also super creepy. Okay, it needs to prove itself, though. And quickly, actually, Fear the Spotlight is getting its first trailer as part of the yeah. Day of the Dev Showcase. So stay tuned after the show. Oh, okay. Uh, nice. I know this is just the start, so we'll probably be seeing you in future years with more from Blumhouse Games. But guys, what do you think of the slate? Pretty amazing, right? I mean, there's still a hell of a lot more that needs to be proven here for this company to be justified, but not so bad. I want goddamn Happy Death Day 3, Jason. 
a brand new Power Rangers game. Uh, wh uh, what? A brand new Power Rangers game? Oh, uh, is it gonna be better than the last one? You know, not saying the last one was horrible, but I'm just saying. Uh, the hell is this animation? Oh, I see. So we're doing the whole side-scrolling beat-em-up thing again. Okay, that's not so bad, but I'm just saying. The last Power Rangers game, the one that was the actual fighting game, it wasn't a bad concept. It's just that its presentation could have been improved. And the fact that there was so much content that was locked behind DLC, that was a big issue. Now, on the other hand, I feel that if this does well, not only will it be similar to how the original fighting games were, you know, the, the original side-scrolling beat-em-up Power Rangers games were, but they could also be a massive improvement, you know, if they're very creative with it. It doesn't have the same shitty controls and stuff. I need Morphin Power Rangers. Well, yeah, the original, the real ones, not that other bullshit. <laughs> Okay, what's this? Here we go, another animal. Is this supposed to be another sad walking simulator game? I was joking. I was fucking joking. I didn't mean it was gonna be literally a sad walking simulator. Maybe there's more to it than that. So, this involves a boy and a deer traveling from one place to the next on a long adventure. They're both alone and sad. I'm just describing what the hell I'm looking at because that's what it feels like. Okay, what journey are they on? Where are they going? And I can see that the deer is growing, but where the fuck are they going? There's a hog following them. Why is there a giant hog following them. Okay, the deer has superpowers. Deer and boy. Okay, very weird. What a beautiful game, Deer and Boy, which comes from first-time developer Jason Houdet in Paris, who started that project alone in 2020 during the pandemic and now has a team of eight helping him realize his vision with financial aid from the French government and games like that are why we do this show, giving first-time developers a chance to show you what they're working on. <laughs> Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 is arriving. I have not played the first game. I have the first game, but I'm interested to see where it goes. Let's see where the sequel goes. Plans of men don't always come to fruition. Man proposes, but God disposes. They had to be killed first by people in order for them to be buried. These two young fellas, I need to find them. I can already see some improvements from the first one. And the others are blue-blooded fledgling. You behave like a spoiled brat. Oh no, guillotine. Humiliation. So this seemingly is following the first game story, but going even deeper. Okay, yeah. I have yet to get into the first game to get the best out of it to understand where the hell it's going now. I mean, I'm already interested. I just hope that it's not wonky to play. Okay, you got my attention. Hopefully it's not butchered with censorship and stuff. <laughs> Next, we step into the dark mind of Silent Hill creator Keuchiro Toyama. I heard about this. Back in 2021, we announced his new game, Slitterhead, at the Game Awards, and now we're giving you a look at the gameplay from his independent Tokyo-based studio. Okay, let's see how this game looks now. I mean, there's been enough time, so hopefully it's not just about taking elements from Silent Hill and replicating the whole thing. Not like the Evil Within with the Resident Evil 4 director and stuff. Yep, there we go. Already some crazy shit. Uh, okay. This has already gotten weird. Very fucking weird. Uh... So we could play as different characters, and there's a certain enemy type that looks like a grasshopper that's mutated and possessed and shit. And I guess the main characters can have superpowers and special abilities. Okay, this doesn't look terrible, but I do think there could be some improvements with the animations and stuff. But other than that, I could see that the person that's involved in the development of this is trying to have a lot of fun, while at the same time trying to add all the horror. I hope this isn't like a roguelike game. I really hope it's not. I really hope that it's not about, oh, the main protagonist can die and they get replaced by another one or you switch to different characters and you know from what I can see you can take over the bodies of different characters and animals apparently but if they die then you can't do something I mean I'm intrigued but I'm still questioning everything <laughs> Hey, look at this. I remember the advertisement for this on Twitter, also known as X. Yeah, I'm definitely interested to play this someday. There's a reason why I'm called Killer Bean. It's because I'm good at what I do. Really good. See, this is very creative. It's an absurd idea, but it's very creative. I used to be an assassin for the Shadow Agency, an international organization powerful enough to shape the world. And then you got betrayed. And tried to kill I knew it. Now, I'm gonna destroy them. <laughs> The gosh darn idiot who wants to take down the shadow agency. <laughs> well, it is sure nice to meet you before you die. See, this is what you call a passion project. It's an absurd idea, but this is a complete passion project. This is like a combination of Saints Row and Max Payne, okay? I don't want to use Grand Theft Auto in example because Grand Theft Auto isn't that fucking silly. But this, this is called being weird, not for the sake of being weird. Fuck, man. Early access? Damn it. I'm still intrigued, but fuck early access. Like that. that was Killer Bean, a third-person roguelike shooter. Oh, damn it. Roguelike. So fun. It's amazing what can happen in this industry. <laughs> 
to introduce their brand new game. Please welcome from the Game Bakers, a small independent studio in Montpellier, France, Audrey Le Prince and Emmerich Toa. Ho, 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 ho. What do we have here? I'm very happy to be here. When we created our studio, Emmerich and I, we promised each other to always uh, come up with something new. So after Fury and Haven, we're here to introduce our new game, Karen. Karen? When I was a teenager, my dad prepared an expedition to Mount K2, but half of his team didn't come back. And I've always wondered why do alpinists risk their lives in such extreme conditions? This is something we wanted to explore in Karen. Karen is a game about what it takes to go beyond your limits. You climb a mountain to reach a summit never reached before. And the climbing gameplay is a challenge. It's very intense and realistic. It's a face-off between you and the mountain. And what you're going to see in the trailer is not from cutscenes. It's the actual climbing gameplay. You can see more later today during Day of the Devs, but now let's have a look. That's one bold concept, but we have yet to see how it plays out. So, is this like Cliffhanger with Sylvester Stallone, or is it something else? Because it feels like it. You know, just the way it's been described. So, is this the type of game where you have to climb all the way up somewhere? All the way up a mountain? It's the journey that counts? The destination, mostly? Because this is a bold move to make this type of game. And, you have to start all over again? If you don't get all the way to the top? You know, kind of like getting over it. It might take you hours to days, and then you camp out, and then do it all over again. You keep going up higher and higher and higher and higher and higher even through the harsh weather and shit so it's an exploration game where you have to climb as high as you can with all your resources and avoid failing to complete every task yeah this is something an adventurer would do this person is doing a lot of screaming but i feel like this game might be very frustrating for some people Oh no, the creator of the Stanley Parable. I'm a fighter. I'm meant to be in the arena, in combat. But instead, I'm out here in the middle of the woods, running a tea shop. So what does running a tea shop involve? Uh, getting ingredients and having brewery skills. Although there's another terminology for it. None of these tasks are all that hard. They just take patience. Now I'm not really the patient type, but I'm surviving. It looks like you're making potions instead of tea. To actually serve the tea to our customers. And once that's done, I'll usually check in with Boro, the guy who owns the shop. Yeah, obviously doing other side quests, tours and shit. And do absolutely nothing. It's not fighting, but it's peaceful. It sounds like what a housewife would do. Is that I actually feel good. Oh, okay. Cooking, cleaning, and all that other shit? Sure. I can stop. I can stop. I can stop running. This is good for me. I need to enjoy this. I feel good. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. Uh, it doesn't seem like you're happy. So why don't you just tell him that you don't want to do the tea? That was very weird. Where is this going? That was Wonderstop, the announcement of the next game from Davey Redden, the creator of the Stanley Parable. I sense there's a twist coming. Yeah, I'm very worried. <laughs> All right, now here's a look at the story trailer for Unknown 9 Awakening, a narrative action adventure game that tells the story of Haruna, a young woman born with the ability to venture into the fold, a dimension that overlaps our own. Okay, that sounds weird. Tell me more. Bandai. God damn. Do you feel it? I do. Your progress is impressive lately, Aruna. Wait a minute. I thought I saw an advertisement for this before. Wasn't this an Unreal Engine 5 preview? Yeah, this is it. I think this is that same game. They advertised this in Unreal Engine 5 as a preview. It's time we took control of our own destiny. Why are you so interested in Vincent, anyhow? He killed someone I loved. Of course. It's always about somebody that you love. Remember stepping. Find your target and bridge the gap. You don't belong here. You're wrong. This is exactly where I'm in. To be. I mean, you don't have any other option but to do it because you have superpowers, so. The fold is a strange place. Vincent found something down there. Session. Interesting. I still have not played these games at all. I do not have any other fucking Monster Hunter games. I have the demos of some of them, but not all. Yeah, I'm gonna wait until the gold edition of Resident Evil 4 gets to like $20 in a Steam sale and get it. <laughs> What is this? Are these people robots or he's a human and they're robots? I'm just saying. This is a nice cinematic trailer, but obviously it's not with gameplay. What are you gonna do? You're gonna pull his mask off? Did a mask kill him? So he took the mask and they believe that he's him. Huh, interesting. I wonder if that's part of the mechanics. Oh, the demo's available. I might have to play that. I gotta play that, I guess. <laughs> All right, we're back here live for more Summer Game Fest. The first Descendant, powered by Unreal Engine 5, is a next-gen looter shooter with dynamic cooperative gameplay, including a grappling hook mechanic. It is finally set for release, and we're very happy here to debut the new trailer and the reveal of the release date. Really? Okay. That looks like Eve from Stellar Blade. Well, that was very interesting. Okay, so there's been nothing more than cinematics than gameplay. Okay, what is the significance with her? All right, well... I guess we'll see how that plays out. That looks awesome. The first Descendant will be available across PlayStation, Xbox, and Steam. Wishlist it now and prepare for the release on July 2nd. 
And now, please welcome two developers whose hit indie game Among Us took the world by storm and a couple of game awards. Surprisingly. From Inner Sloth, here are Victoria Tran and Forrest Willard. Well, here we go. The surprise hit of the year. What's up, gamers? Hi. Can you believe they just let us be on this stage? Like, no chaperones. Yeah, it's, it's surprising. Do you like, think they'll let us do that? Among Us 2, 3, 4. How are you guys going to do that, though? What's going to top it? Something very real we wanted to present to you all today. There's been so many great indie games in recent years, but it's also been no secret that it's kind of a rough time in the industry. So yeah, no shit. So we thought we could help out a little bit. That's why we're excited to announce our side project, Outer Sloth, an indie game fund we made that offers the kind of deals we would have wanted back in our less popular Among E days. This is our way of saying thank you to our crewmates, players, peers, by helping some games and devs have the funding and freedom needed to ship their games. And then we all get to play them, which was the real plan. I really want games. Outer Sloth Sloth is our passion project and dream for a better, more sustainable industry. We are really excited and incredibly, incredibly nervous to reveal it here and show you the current lineup of games we've managed to fund because of you. And don't worry, Jeff, it has your favorite, a ton of world premieres. Enjoy! Really? Well, I mean, that must have required a lot of money. And honestly, uh, I have Among Us, but I have not fucking played it yet. And uh, these people got very lucky to get a lot of money to pay for whatever the fuck it is that they're trying to promote. You may already be playing our first game, Mars First Logistics. What is it with Mars? We are Trinket Studios, creators of Battle Chef Brigade, and this is our card battler RPG, Battle Suit Aces. We are Studio Any Percent, and we are making the Marsfield Archives, a game about building and exploring connections. There seems to be a lot of building games. We just released a demo for One Button Bosses, our boss rush game with a single button to press and a ton of bosses to beat. Press X to win. This is Rogue Eclipse, our epic spaceflight action roguelike, where you'll have to customize and master your Starfighter, take on merciless armadas, and vanquish a fleet of colossal super destroyers. Yeah, imagine a Star Wars game like that. One more game that's very early in development. Don't say Among Us 2, please. I'm Eka, creative director of Outer Loop Games, makers of Thirsty Suitors. What? Explore the world in an upgradable mech and cook up tasty dishes. Okay, we got a game about tea and now a game about cooking. And reunite with your strange loved ones for one last meal. Project Dosa is a game about life, death, love, and food for the soul. Okay. Thanks, Victoria and Forrest. Those all look fantastic and I cannot wait to play them. But all of those amazing indie games aren't the only thing coming out of Inner Sloth. Did you know that there's going to be an Among Us TV show? Yeah, I heard about that. That's fucking weird. There doesn't need to be one. Check out this sneak peek. There doesn't need to be an Among Us TV show. It could easily be a short, you know? Like the plot of the fucking game is to figure out who's lying, to figure out who's the alien, and ship them the fuck out. That is literally it. Nobody talks except people that are playing the game. It's essentially, god damn it, it's essentially like the thing where one of the individuals turns out to be the extraterrestrial or the monster, whatever, and they have to be executed. So my question is, how are they going to turn this into a television series? The whole concept itself is like a one and done. Like Randall Park, Deborah Wilson. Okay, this is surprising. Up next, we have Sonic X Shadow Generation. Right, 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 okay. Well, I mean, if you like Sonic Generations, it shouldn't be too new to you. Now it's time for a glimpse of Shadow's brand new powers and gameplay from a standalone campaign, as well as the official release date announcement. Well, what do you mean, brand new powers for Shadow? Shadow's had the same powers since fucking Sonic Adventure 2 and the Shadow the Hedgehog video game. Like, why couldn't Sega just update the PC port of Sonic Generations and have a remastered port with the same content on modern consoles? Like, are you kidding me? You're telling me that Sega couldn't do that? Sega couldn't freely upload an updated version of Sonic Generations to current owners on PC and then make that same exact version for the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X or whatever. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, it would have made a lot of sense, it would have saved a lot of time, and it's gonna definitely would have saved a lot of people a lot of money. Like, I don't want to pay for a new version of this. I already have it on PC. I'm interested to play the game, but I don't want to have to repay for it. I want it as a free update. But knowing Sega, they'll probably delist the original one, and then you're gonna be forced to pay for a new one. I just hope they let us have it for free. It's gonna be on Steam. It would not make any sense to buy this again. Looks nice, though. The Year of Shadow, right? What the fuck is that supposed to mean? All right, in the upcoming online survival game, Dune Awakening from Funcom, there is one small decision that unleashed a chain of events which set the stage for the story the player will experience. Really? Let's Tell us. Out for the first time, what that is. Yeah, I'm curious. What the hell is that? What decision? What I find is a future that never happened. One where I 
Paul Atreides was never born. Uh-oh, time paradox. I created the future. No, you changed the future. It created me. It changed you. But I see a narrow way, a path that might have been. What if my mother had obeyed her orders and given birth girl? What? What? Everything would change. How? How would it have changed? Exposed before his betrayal, a world where my father lives. House Atreides surviving the Battle of Arakeen. Sardaukar deployed to protect the Spice Melange. A war of assassins spreading across the planet. Fremen exterminated. This is one hell of a way to look at it. Muad'Dib. No. Lizan al Gaib. No. Kwisatz Haderach. All of my visions lead to horror, except for this one. Leads to you. All he's saying is that if his mother had given birth to a female, none of this would have happened. So what the hell? That's so weird. But okay. More Dune Awakening coming at Gamescom ONL in August. <laughs> Now it is time to see the announcement of another new game from a brand new development studio. A brand new development studio? Okay, more great animation that otherwise should have been in an animated series. All this talent, all for video games. It's not a bad idea to combine ideas, but some of these ideas need to be something else. And this really isn't telling me what the game is about except for the cinematics. Like, that's all I'm seeing. All I'm seeing are cinematics instead of an actual footage of gameplay. To tell us more about Battle Aces and show you the gameplay, here's David Kim from Uncapped Games. That's what you should have done the first time. The fuck? Battle Aces is the RTS game for everyone. Everybody. As well as RTS veterans. We really want to bring the core fun of RTS to everybody. Kind of like how games such as World of Warcraft did for MMOs or Hearthstone did for card games. So Battle Aces is an action-packed army versus army game that has a high emphasis on the strategy. We want to bring this type of very specific RTS fun to players in two major ways. We want to amplify both the in and out of game strategizing through unit decks. And what makes unit decks very cool is not only will players be able to define the exact way that they wish to play, but also players will be able to experience an endless possibility of strategies. Second, we want to eliminate the tedious clicks required to play an RTS as much as possible so that players playing this game are experiencing only the fun parts of playing an RTS game. So, if you want to learn more about Battle Aces, or if you want to sign up for our beta test that's coming up very soon, then please make sure to visit our website at playbattleaces.com. Thank you. Well then, I see the potential there, even though I've never played that many games like that before. The exciting new destination for a game that Shadow dropped at the Game Awards last year, the finals. Yeah, I haven't totally gotten into that. Now, after dozens of updates and two seasons, we're unveiling where contestants will be going in the all-new season starting next week on June 13th. Sharpen your katanas and welcome to season three of the finals. Yeah, I have yet to get into this. I mean, I'd be fucking confused too. You guys traveled back in time. Yeah, this is a game that I have yet to ever share any full Let's Plays of. Like, for me, it probably might get very addicting if I'm very comfortable playing it, but as it is at the moment, I have not gotten into it. But if it has a lot of fans, I'm not surprised, because I intended to play it beforehand, but I didn't. So we'll see. We'll see. The finals in Kyoto. <laughs> All right, please welcome multiple Game Awards winner and a dazzling Game Awards performer, if I do say so myself, Sam Lake from Remedy. And there he is, the original face model of Max Payne, the guy that loves musicals and making a fool out of himself. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know what the fuck is up with him and musicals and shit, but it seemed out of place for Alan Wake. Hi. You see, this is now the only way they let me come on stage to tell you something exciting. Really? Are you sure it's not your own choice? Many of you have been posting Remedy Game Collection pictures on your shelves with Alan Wake 2 so far digital only, sadly missing. Because of the choices. To announce physical deluxe editions and physical collector's editions. Alan Wake 2 coming this fall. How about a director's cut with Alan Wake as the main protagonist instead of Saga? Next, we promised you some expansion content. Really? More Alan Wake and less Saga? I'm thrilled to introduce you all to Night Springs. Uh, okay. It contains three episodes with three familiar, fan-favorite, playable characters in mysterious, terrifying and quirky quirky a chance for us to really go out there with nudity i'm just saying i'm just saying if you want to go really out there will be playable i wonder if this motherfucker regrets saga anderson 
in less than 24 hours. Okay, like how much crazier could it get? It couldn't be any crazier than that last performance that you guys did at the Game Awards. I invite you to step into Night Springs. Alrighty then, let's see what the hell this is. I wonder if it's going to be exclusive for the Epic Games and stuff. A shifting space. Existing in a countless number of parallel realities. Different every time we set upon the road that leads us there. And yet, always familiar to us. Yes, you're gonna do your Twilight Zone parody. That's exactly what this is, a fucking Twilight Zone parody. I'm in danger. Please, my number one fan. You're the only one who can... Ah, uh, see, this is what's been bothering me about Alan Wake 2. I feel like... Uh... God. I seriously feel like he's losing his fucking mind. If this were Hideo Kojima, I would understand. But the issue that I have with Alan Wake being like this, Alan Wake spends so much time, in particular with the second installment, it spends so much time having an imbalance of tones. On one hand, it's supposed to be serious, apparently. But on the other hand, you got all this other silly shit happening. You know, there's no problem with having fun, but, you know, I don't want to be thinking of a fucking musical and unnecessary extra comedy. But then again, the first game, along with American nightmare exists. They've come to these mythical shores, seeking mastery over death itself. I know what song they're covering. Where primal forces clash over the island's deepest secrets. Every island has deep secrets. Where heroes are forged and demons are born. Demons already exist, apparently. So it's not really something that can easily be forged. Okay, then. That's right. New World Eternum will launch on PS5, Xbox Series X and S, and PC on October 15th. And now you can play the game start to finish as a solo player or play co-op and use cross-play as well. If you're watching SGF on TikTok Live right now, you can comment HSR in the chat to claim a special in-game bundle for Honkai Star Rail of Stellar Jade from TikTok Game Reward. And speaking of Honkai Star Rail, Hoyoverse's latest space fantasy RPG just concluded its version 2.3 special program a few hours ago, but there's more. A sneak peek at the upcoming expedition featuring a beloved character who is clearly ready for the forthcoming journey with her brand new look. I still have not played this game at all. It's because they're afraid to wake up from the dream. You see, everything is possible in this land of dreams. I would challenge that. The nightmarish past will disperse and fade away like bubbles in water. And the future that you don't want to face will never come. Why do people choose to slumber? I mean, they have to get their energy back. We will wake from our dreams. War dance? I can't miss out. I'm joining too. <laughs> All right, what's this? Another first-person game? I wonder if this is in VR. Because if this is in VR, I'm still not going to be able to play it without a VR headset. That's a lot of gold. Okay, definitely in first-person. Definitely a survival game to get out of life. Okay, so the point seems to be that you get to a certain area, you try to get the gold and whatever, you kill hordes of enemies, and then you try to get out alive while using a bunch of weapons, magic spells, and whatever the fuck. Okay, that's just what I'm gathering based on this information. Ooh, and I can play it for free. Okay. Good. I'm glad it's not limited to one platform. There you have it, the unforgiving fantasy FPS dungeon PvPVE adventure, Dark and Darker, is now live on both Steam and Epic Game Store today. So play it this weekend. <laughs> Lots of fans are joining us here in person at the YouTube Theater, and we thank you for that. And ahead of the show, four lucky fans were upgraded to our VIP section thanks to the Discover Orange Ticket Upgrade. With Discover, you don't have to be a VIP to be treated like one. All right, now here's the announcement of the release date for Capcom's upcoming Kunitsugami Path of the Goddess. Okay, this is another game that Capcom was working on that I was very curious about, and I didn't know whether or not it was going to be a sequel to Onimusha, but in any case, that it wasn't. I still wanted to know what direction it was going into to see if it was worthwhile because at the time there have been a lot of games that were looking similar to this and there still are so although i am curious about more of this i just think that this is a very different decision to make i don't know if it's gonna last long though i don't know if it's gonna have raving reviews like the other games because from what i can see here it seems like you know maybe it's a bit turn-based and stuff maybe uh you make decisions as you go without like being like onimusha and stuff like this is a very different concept to make <laughs> I don't know what the hell this is, but full campaign co-op. Huh, okay. You know she's not dead. Hyper-like. Hmm, okay. 
this game I also have not played yet. What is it with all these games with ragdoll physics taking on? Like seriously, why is it that every fucking time there's a game like this, all of them focus on ragdoll physics to get their point across instead of it just being normal? It's an overplayed concept. It's so overplayed. It's okay to have a silly game, but goddamn, I've seen it all the time. Every fucking time. It's ragdoll physics after fucking ragdoll physics. Damn, can't there just be one multiplayer game that's silly like this without it being focused on ragdoll physics? Hey, look at this, the comedian. We wanted to take this time to dispel any of these completely unfounded rumors and allegations and reassure you that things here at Amcorp and the city of San Vansterdam have never been better. Things are going great. Uh, we have nothing to hide from the citizens. Is this supposed to be for Robocop or something? We think this town rules. Why would we hear a town that rules? I can't stop thinking about how you're saying we're selling the city for scraps. That makes me sick. Uh, everybody's leaving, man. My wife hasn't been on the toilet for weeks because of what you're saying about what M Corp's doing to this town. All those lies. Mr. Robinson, I think we've caught on. All right, this is business. Look around, pal. This is how businesses are run. Now, you should have known that when you were hired on, okay? Jack, tissues. Come on, pal. Ah! Come on, faster. That's not about this. That's a father and son. That's actually a home issue. We love it here at M Corp, and we are not going anywhere. We'll be here a long time. Yeah, bullshit. What was this advertising again? What the fuck was that advertising? That was, that was random. All right, welcome back to Summer Game Fest, and now let's head to Sam Vansterdam for a new look at Skate from EA. Okay, speak, what? You again, the fuck? Uh, crap. Some really bad stuff's happening out there. They're gonna need a lot of help cleaning that up. That's bad. Yeah, I guess it's Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5 that they were trying to clean up. No shit, you're still working on it. Apparently, this is supposed to be a different experience where now, apparently, it's mostly focused on MMO and whatever the fuck. But anyway, like I was saying, I only have two of the Skate games. Skate 2 and 3. I don't have the first one, unfortunately. Very exciting that people will finally be able to play Skate on console in the near future. Yeah, uh, assuming that they get it right. <laughs> adorable, deadly, and has over 25 million players worldwide. Fortnite. I'm talking about Pal World. Oh, the Can Pokemon I... killer. Cheer up, buddy. It's Summer Game Fest. Now, here is a first major update announcement. A whole new island is coming. Really? A whole new island? Are you sure that's it? Nothing else? And this is yet another game that I have not played. I'm just really surprised that they managed to get away with this. It was obviously supposed to be like Pokemon, but it thrived, and it was very popular. I mean, it still is, I guess, but still. Very crazy. Like, I would prefer a game like this over another Pokemon game with recycled content. There's like really nothing else that they could be doing with Pokemon. I feel like Pokemon should have ended with Ash Ketchum becoming one of the best Pokemon trainers and then leaving it at that. But instead they dragged the fucking series out long and now we've got a Pokemon <laughs> hybrid here. That's not exactly a Pokemon property, but you know. Well then, hopefully it works out. I was high on the Steam charts. Congrats to Power World on the new update. <laughs> Next up, we've got a big announcement from Valorant. I don't give a fuck about Valorant. I will never play Valorant unless all this other bullshit gets taken out. We have been fortunate to serve players in their pursuit of what we call the Valorant moment. Yeah, sure you have. Plays and clutches you make while all eyes are on you. Millions of players all over the world have earned their own Valorant moments on PC. And today, the stage is set to welcome a whole new group of players. Yeah, well, I'm not going to be one of them. Not now, not later, not ever. Like, this game could have easily been fixed if Riot Games did not have any involvement, and its stupid kernel grade anti cheat didn't fucking get any access to your computer. If it was just kicked entirely the fuck out. Oh my god. See. When you compare this to Overwatch, there's almost no fucking difference. Almost no difference at all. And I know that's a weird thing to say, but honestly, if you played Overwatch or Team Fortress or whatever the fuck, you have played this game. Even though for the most part, there could be some differences. There could be. But honestly, this game has had a lot of trouble in the past and still does with Riot Games did with it. I refuse to play Valorant until all that shit is resolved. First and foremost, get rid of Battle Eye and whatever the fuck else. Put it on Steam. Don't have it required to make a goddamn Riot Games account. Fuck that. Just no. Valorant is for people who doesn't want to play anything else that's better. I do not care about Valorant. That was Valorant's core tactical gameplay. Everything you just saw was captured on console. Of course it is. Valorant is coming to PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S this year. Beta starts June 14th. I'm not right fucking now. signing up for that shit. Playvalorant.com. We are so excited for your input to make sure that Valorant plays great on console. Yeah, so get rid of Battle Eye first, motherfuckers. Get rid of Battle Eye and it'll work properly. Anna Donlin. Thanks, guys. Hey, everyone. 
And one of my favorite things about Valorant has been seeing the community build the game and the sport right along with us. For the last four years, we have been on the most amazing journey, bringing Valorant to players all around the world, most recently to China. Of course. That's where it most predominantly is played. The overseas players play it a lot. New players bring their passion and expression to Valorant has been the biggest joy of the ride so far. And now we are ready and so, so excited to welcome a whole new group of players onto new platforms. We hope you'll join us and we can't wait to see where you take us next. Well, hopefully you guys take this game straight to the grave because fuck Valorant. See, I'm not that excited about this. I'm just not that excited about Valorant. There's literally nothing they could say that would make me excited about it. Nothing. Not one fucking thing. That being said, I did say that if they get rid of Battle Eye and all this other stuff, I would probably not have as much of a problem with it, but the fact that Riot Games is responsible and all that bullshit that they do, I'm disinterested. I would play Team Fortress any other day than over that. I mean, shit, I could think of many other games I would rather play than Valorant, but still, if I feel like my account is gonna be at risk, even just for playing once, fuck all that. I don't give a shit how many fans it has, I don't care how popular it is overseas or in America, I don't care how many people are playing in teams and competitiveness and stuff, it does not exempt everything Thing I said. Fuck this game and Riot Games. Exciting to have Riot on console with Valorant. Thanks for the team at Riot for sharing that with us here at SGF. Our next announcement is a big deal from our friends at DoorDash. Really? I've never used DoorDash. I just don't like the idea of people fucking with your food either. Bunch of lazy cunts. We've got a guy who is normally co-streaming our shows, Yang Yak. Wait, what? Huh? He's been in really? such as uh, Like a Dragon and God of War Ragnarok. Uh, wasn't a good actor in Yakuza game. In a movie, Inside Out 2, where he plays a fictional video game character, Lance Slash Blade. What? Your exclusive first look. Check this out. Is this character actually worthwhile? or is this character just made off of his personality? Why is he here? Yeah, what the fuck is he doing in her head? I long to be a hero, but darkness haunts my past. It sounds like he's just using the same voice that he's done for the other characters. Fit, worthless. Don't you dare say that. You do not deserve to be thrown away. Uh, one second, Lance. Don't you remember his power move? Okay, look, I just want to get this out of the way, and I want to make it clear before I continue watching this. I mean, it's going to continue anyway. Personally, I don't think that somebody like Yong Ye should be given a role that is completely out of his control in terms of him being able to play as him properly and stuff. I understand that he's established himself as an actor, you know, voice actor mostly, but some of the roles he might be challenged to play might be completely out of his league, and it's not uncommon. So if he gets miscast as a character, I think it's something that should be acknowledged, because even if he is good as playing as one character I don't think another character that he can't apply for should be exempt from the equation. Hey look, it's the guy from The Hangover, even though that he's actually a real doctor. And today, Chicken is excited to share a new game that Chicken and Chicken's buddies are in called Squad Busters. You fight monsters, collect lots of shiny things, and Chicken has a big role. That's all that matters. Seems like Leslie Chow fell on hard times after, you know, what happened in The Hangover Part 3. I wonder if we're gonna get a hangover four with him. Who are you? The fuck? Look at your phone. This is the alternative end into Hangover 3 when Alan wakes up and finds out everything was just a dream. Make your life more fun. I'm fine. I drink right out of the carton. Why would you do that? Go on, get off. I am butt naked from the waist down. Why? Why don't you just take your shirt off? Tell me about yourself. I, I think I'm an excellent candidate for the job uh, because... Your sword fight time. Hey, sword. wait a minute. I figured that was Thor. So Thor should have looked like instead of him being fat. Which is why uh, you'll, you'll have the job. Oh, oh, congratulations. congratulations. There's more where that came from. Oh, I, I hope not. Guys, maybe everything is not a squad. This is so weird. You need to lift up your legs in order for you to do it properly. Like, what the fuck? I wonder if I gotta worry about copyright claim by the time I have this uploaded. Might have to edit the fuck out of this. Pasta. Jinx. 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 What the fuck is this advertisement? That was so weird. I think our job here is done. Where are you going? You can't leave. Aye, aye, aye. We are never leaving you. Why, are they all in his head? I guess this is the true sequel to Inside Out. The fuck? What the fuck? Close the goddamn door. This is weird. The fuck was this advertisement? This mobile game did not need this. It did not need this many celebrities. The fuck was that? All right, please join me in welcoming to the SGF stage Monster Hunter series producer, Mr. Riozo Tujimoro. Riozo san. All righty then. Even though I haven't played the other Monster Hunter games. Okay. All right. Subtitles, please. Thank you, Jeff. Hello, everyone. We've prepared a very special trailer today for Summer Game Fest. 
I want everyone to be on the lookout for a very mysterious large monster near the end of the trailer, as it's an important monster within the game. I wouldn't have known because I haven't fucking played the other game. The fact that she can remember all these words and having to listen to this guy do this the whole time is amazing. As you'll see, we're working to deliver a gaming experience that immersion and action. I hope players look forward to playing with their friends across different platforms when the game launches simultaneously in 2025 on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, and PC. I mean, it's likely going to have a lot of sales because of the fact that there's a lot of people who enjoy the games. Lastly, there will be a new trailer for Monster Hunter no surprise. at Gamescom in August. And our first public hands-on playable demo of Monster Hunter Wilds will also debut at Gamescom. I don't know when I'll begin actually playing these games, or maybe even start the demos, but I'm not completely discounting this from the experience. Yeah, over there! Why are you here? You can't do this alone! We need to shake them off! Follow me! Yeah, I mean, you guys have to work together to get out of this shit. There's too many of them! Of course! It's called Monster Hunter! Watch out for that glove! I will draw a tire! Cover me! You got it! Be careful! Be ready! We can make it to the rocks, we may lose them! See, this seems very exciting, but I have to play the other games to understand. I mean, I guess I can not understand because the material is there, but... <sighs> there's so much of Monster Hunter that I haven't gotten into yet. I'll handle it. You find someplace safe. Thank you. Is this the monster that they're talking about? The one that's flying in the sky? Or maybe it's this? It showed me all of them. But which one are they talking about? Like, which one could it be? Okay, well, I'll get it in the future. Maybe. We will see you at Gamescom in August. <laughs> Now, during last year's PlayStation Showcase, the game Phantom Blade Zero from S-Game wowed us all. It seemed very similar to another game, but yeah. Brand new trailer for the game featuring all real gameplay. Here's our final game of the show. Oh, final game. Okay, well, they better go all out if this is the final game because this is one hell of a way to end the show. I thought there would be something else. Familiar, that is. Yeah, this really needs to stand out if it really wants to get my attention. There goes that eccentric villain again. I really hope this isn't a rogue game. I don't want to start all over again at every fucking check. Point. Oh god, it looks like it is. And there we go again. The character's not- Yep, yep, I was right. It's that kind of game. Oh god. When is it going to stop? I mean, no matter how much style they have, these games are not that fucking different. Oh my god. But again, setting that aside, I can see where this might have a lot of fans. But Jesus Christ, this doesn't look like it had to be that kind of game. I prefer the sense of progression. Ugh, gotta worry about constant updates and shit. <sighs> so, uh, when is the demo gonna be released? I guess I'll get to try that. That looks so good. Full demo that Media will be playing this weekend, so you'll hear much more about that. And that's gonna do it for our Summer Game Fest live show. What a surprise. Thank you, Jeff. You're welcome, lady. Happy Summer Game Fest, everyone. That's it. Day of the Devs is coming up live right now on the stream featuring an hour of indie game reveals, including the next game from Cappy, and that's followed by Devolver Direct. Now keep checking SummerGameFest.com for other event streams this weekend, and we'll see you again live this August 20th in Germany for Gamescom Opening Night Live. Thanks for watching, everyone. <laughs> Okay. Well, I'm not gonna say that that was disappointing, but I was expecting something else. I mean, I didn't know what the hell what was gonna be shown, but I was expecting maybe some surprises from particular publishers and developers that maybe I've been looking at for a while. You know, maybe Hideo Kojima or something like that, but then again, there's also other things too. Alright, I'm gonna keep that paused right there, and I'm gonna make quick commentary before this stops. Like I said, I'm not disappointed, but there's certain things that I maybe thought I was going to see. Maybe some surprises from certain developers and publishers that I did not see at all. I'm not saying it's the worst thing I've seen, and I'm not saying my expectations were set high. For the most part, like I said earlier, I was hoping that it wasn't going to be some of the games we've already seen already that were advertised before at State of Play and stuff, but I understand they want to get the word out, they want to show new content, but for the most part, you see a lot of indie games, which isn't a problem. There's nothing wrong with indie games, but they've taken up a lot of time, and then when you get to the other games that aren't indie games, they get a shorter amount of time, surprisingly. At least that's what I was seeing. I've been seeing a lot of advertisements for indie games before it got to the bigger stuff, which probably is fair. But then again, they were taking up a lot of time, and I feel like the cards that they were playing aren't their best ones. Because it is the Summer Game Fest. It's nothing like the Game Awards. I'm only assuming that maybe that what's happening now is that they're going to save some of the much bigger stuff for the other presentations, even to the next Gamescon. But we'll see. I mean, I really don't have much left to say. I mean, some of these things really intrigued me, but some of this stuff, from what I can tell, that aren't just free-to-play, but also titles that are going to be available from newcomers on a platform that may require me to sign up for early access and shit. Well, like, no. I'd rather just take a demo before I get the full product. 
So it's probably going to be a while before I play something like uh, Monster Hunter and uh, other stuff. But, you know, in the meantime, I'm just going to continue looking out for demos and react to stuff. Because that's like the closest I'll be able to get anyway. But that concludes this for the Summer Game Fest reaction. The Xbox Showcase is next. But until that happens, if that ever happens, and when that happens, this was The Venturous Gamer. And I hope you've enjoyed your Venturous experience. <laughs>